Hello, my name is Jeff Rolka. I want to thank you for joining me this Saturday morning. This is your live event. This is office hours where I set a time a little bit, a little bit of time, an hour of time each week to take live questions and chit chat, talk a little bit about music, talk a little bit about singing, do a little dance, sing a little song, something to that effect. Um, not really much to say. It's a bit of a, a cloudy, rainy day here. Hey, Ronaldo. Hello, maestro. I mean, hello, Ronaldo. Thank you. Um, Dylan Klein music. Hey, Dylan Klein, if you're still cool with it, we talked about um, deputizing you into um, moderation. If you don't mind, I'm going to do that now. There you go. Um, Joanna, morning. Good morning to you. Sleepwalker, hello. That's an, an interesting user ID. I used to sleepwalk a lot when I was a young lad. Many, many humorous tales around that. Um, the Sauce Group. Uh, hey, Jeff, I haven't sang in ages, about four months. What's the best way to get into it? Hmm. Uh, Thank you, Dylan. I'm going to skip ahead. Thank you, Dylan Klein Music. You'll notice you now have a, have a wrench next to your name, similar to Mandy Cummins. No, I will not be dancing this morning, Mandy. Thank you. <laughs> um, Karina, hello. Okay, the sauce, which also very interesting user IDs coming up this morning. Very cool. Yes, you are, Karina. Okay, focus, 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 focus. Um, it, it kind of depends a little bit on what you were doing before you had four months off. If you were singing, you know, on a daily basis and you had a really, really good regimen and all that kind of stuff, then I would suggest you really focus. And now different people are going to do this differently. This is, this is purely my take on matters. If I have to take any amount of time off, then depending on the amount of time, I know that at least for a short period of time when I begin my practice again, I'm going to be doing primarily vocalizations, primarily uh, in my thyroarytenoid dominant singing voice or chest voice, um, ascending to the zona de passaggio, but maybe not over it, although that has certainly changed uh, in recent years. That, that doesn't really, that, that doesn't, that's not a thing for me any longer. Um, I can I can easily get back into vocalizing over the secondo passaggio, but if that's not something you were doing before you had time off, then don't don't go now trying to do it and expecting it to work well. Um, I, after four months, I would expect to do at least a week or two of pretty, you know, um, easy middle of the range, middle of the nice range, not middle of your overall tessitura, whatever it was before you took time off but middle of your most comfortable range, just going through vowel alignment, reestablishing good airflow again. I, I like to say just knocking the rust off the vocal folds. That is obviously not a technical term. There's no rust on our vocal folds after a little period of inactivity, but um, that just kind of shows my, my Michigan upbringing. Everything, every, anything that's been let to sit for a while rusts because um, I grew up so close to the Motor City. So, yeah, that I would just say, you know, enter, enter, take your time, just go easy, uh, and be sensitive to it. So if it starts to feel good and you can get into the zone de passage, then, you know, start your practice again and go over. Um, usually for myself, after about a week, I feel like I can start singing songs again. And I, it may be the same for you, may not. Let's see, man. Uh, I'm here on the uh, Dylan Klein Thumb Ups. I love your opening tonight. The yes, do a little dance, sing a little song, get down tonight, get down tonight. Um, Rob the Truth. Interesting. I love that user. Lots of interesting user ideas today. I mean, that I, I, I can read that two ways like Rob, the individual, the truth, or rob the truth as if to to steal something from the truth and that begs the question of what in fact is the truth hey jeff how's it going how would you go about avoiding rigidity in the voice i can't seem to sing as well softly so i compensate by increasing my volume and it causes my voice to get irritated hmm. okay so 
without hearing you, I suspect that your overall balance of phonation, your, the way that you are balancing um, v muscular engagement versus airflow is not entirely optimal. <clears throat> um, there, there's at least one video that does some Mesa de Voce exercises at the end of it. That is like the long-term game. Like that's, that's your long goal. And the Mesa de Voce exercises are things like and really trying to make a very organic but slow diminuendo on a single pitch while maintaining good intonation and maintaining good tone quality. It doesn't count if it goes that, that's, not, that's not the idea behind that. Um, functionally, when I do a Mesa de Voce exercise like that where I'm making that diminuendo, I'm really consciously increasing and reinvesting myself in the concept of subglottic air pressure. Support is another way of talking about that. Um, if you let go of your muscle engagement, then you start to rely too heavily on the muscles around the larynx, and that is going to... Rigidity, I mean, I, it, I, I wouldn't necessarily choose rigidity, although I'm thinking it's similar thing. I would talk about like tightness or heaviness to the voice is the way that I would experience it, but those kinds of words are very subjective. Rigidity, tightness, heaviness, those are subjective terms. So your, your rigidity and my concept of tightness or heaviness may in fact be entirely synonymous. Joanna, I have a question. Whenever I sing, I notice that my articulation isn't clear enough. What exercises do you suggest? My favorite one is the That's also a really great subglottic air pressure support exercise. However, Another very, um, uh, but being more specific to, I presume that you're talking about this in, uh, in your repertoire selections, in your song selections, what you can do is go through the song and really hyper articulating the consonants and also the facial expressions along with it. So, you know, I've been, for whatever reason, I've been going off on the do, do a little, sing a little, do a little dance, sing a little song. So something like that might be, do a little dance, sing a little song, get down to night. And you can practice through your articulations in the different consonants. However, we have to find a middle ground and depending on where that piece lies in your tessitura, that amount of articulators, fricatives and whatnot may not necessarily be appropriate. It, it all is relative to the range that you are in. Kim and Clark Music Studio. My question is, how can I, and hello, by the way, how can I stop singing from my throat and start, stop falling back in my throat? How can you sing high notes without it? Okay, so there's, there's like a, the, okay, one, there's a whole lot of question in there. That's, that's a very, very big question. Um, singing from my throat and falling back in my throat are very similar in what they are. It does depend a little bit on the vowels. It also, if it's, if it's an overall vowel alignment, like this is a very common thing to have happen with some vowels. You know, like some people will sing e perfectly fine, but e o, o really falls way far back. Um, and what I like to do with that is I, tr I try to sandwich those vowels in between ones that have the tendency to be more forward. We use the tendencies of the narrow forward focusing vowel, E in this case, to try to influence the behavior of O, which is a slightly wider but rearward focusing vowel. Um, then that, but that depends on how your alignment is. If it's really falling back on you, like really, really 
aggressively and you're you're like getting the tongue root way down then that probably may not that may not be enough singing high notes without hurting i suspect you're trying to maintain thyroarytenoid dominance as you ascend into and above the secundo passaggio and my advice to you is to check into some of the videos that are on my channel that detail about making a smooth transition over the secundo passaggio even if you still choose to maintain thyroarytenoid dominant singing which i only i only tentatively advise to a major second above the secundo passaggio and i wouldn't even necessarily say i advise that i would say that i think that that's probably an acceptable level of risk in terms of not doing like not in not getting long-term fatigue and stuff like that happening with your voice um, even even if you still choose to do that learning the practice of balancing phonation through the zona de passaggio making a smooth transition over the secundo passaggio will give you more of a choice about how you're going to sing in that range so maybe you're not maintaining that all the time that is a presumption on my part i don't know that you're doing that um, i haven't heard you to my knowledge um, but that's usually when, when you talk about high notes hurting that's usually the problem is that one is quote unquote pulling chest um, and a, more than a major second above the secundo passaggio i think you're really taking a, a risk there chair Jeff, at my school, we might start a singing club. Awesome. Any tips on how to teach the members music notes or like a certain curriculum to follow? Well, one, I, I absolutely commend you for wanting to learn to read music. I think that's awesome. I think that that will set you apart from many other vocal ensembles and it will serve you well as musicians for, for as long as you choose to be a musician. My, my my immediate thought is there's a very very good website called musictheory.net and the gentleman that does that website is very cool uh, i mean i actually i don't know him i've only like traded a few emails with him but he's always been really nice via email and um, his website has only gotten better and better and better he now has an app um, similar to me he he, I think he has a few paid options and things like that, but most of the stuff is there. Um, I, I mean, I think pretty much all the content is there free of charge. Um, he does take donations too, um, which is great. But the point is, is that there's no, there's no cost to entry and he has all kinds of great um, tools and interactive um, devices, programs on the website, and little quizzes you can take, and there's ear training as well as note reading, as well as rhythm reading, all, all the sort of fundamentals of music theory are there, and, and quite advanced stuff too, like you, could, you can really go a long ways with that. So I would check that out, and then maybe come back and ask if you have any questions about it. I'll talk, hello. Rebecca Jones, can you teach how to sing in an operatic voice? Well, okay, actually, this is, that's an interesting question. Everything on my channel is derived out of bel canto te teaching. So the notion, that, the notion that there's a difference in the training isn't entirely accurate. If you should choose to pursue the, the, uh, an operatic performance standard, then a continuation along the lines of the technical exercises and warm-ups that you find on my channel is the direction that you would go. Um, the The difference is, is that I do tailor my vowel concepts to keep us within the popular genres, but in the thyroarytenoid dominant range of the voice, there is little to no difference in this, but you would need to continue to pursue a greater and greater balance of phonation and subglottic air pressure in order to have the kind of release around the musculature, the larynx and neck to, to cultivate that kind of timbre. The operatic voice isn't an affectation. It, it is, in my opinion, the natural consequence of continuing along the lines of perfecting and perfecting and perfecting your overall technique. The point of bel canto technique, in my opinion, is to optimize phonation, to optimize the use of the human voice. 
That's not an affectation. That's us getting out of the way of the way the system works. And that voice, the sound that you hear used with the, um, you know, with classical singers is, is what they're doing. Mandy, speaking of vocal rest, I'm on partial rest for a few days. I'm allowed to do gentle exercise by my doctor. Doesn't want me doing gigs. Well, I think that's great. And I think that all of us need vocal rest from time to time. Um, by all means, carry on with your doctor's orders. Doctor's orders are first. And, uh, you know, good luck with that. That's not always easy to do. Um, Jatavian Butler. I've accessed my mixed range. I would like to know how to make it clear and less squeaky. Also gaining clarify. I mean, I, I pre presume you mean clarity there. Um, okay, one, mixed range is frequently used to mean cricothyroid dominant singing voice. I don't know that you're using in that in capacity right now. Um, my concern is that squeaky, the, the squeaky word there has me as somewhat concerned. And it makes me wonder if you are using a really um, hyperglottic mode of singing as you're entering the zona de passaggio. That's a very common way to get vocalists who have not been able to sing over the secundo passaggio to stay on the vocal fold proper. So you'll see it a lot of times. It, it usually forms something along the lines of um, nay, 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 that kind of a sound. And while yes, that is in fact keeping the vocal fold adducted, um, it's really, really far from from a balanced way of singing through the zona de passaggio. What I, in my training, in my studies, is the mixed range. The, the mixed range in my studies is the area between the primo passaggio and the secondo passaggio. So for the male tenor, that's between C, I had to look, C4 and F4, give or take, um, depending on what, what variety of tenor you might be. It could be a little different by as much as a major second. So. That's the, that's the tipping point where the balance between thyroarytenoid dominance and cricothyroid dominance is occurring. Um, and my, my, my thought is that you, I, again, I don't know where you're at vocally and how you're doing with the exercises, but you might benefit from some descending ooh and maybe, some, maybe, maybe, maybe some descending A vowels. So like a you, 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 um, just to take a little bit of weight off the vocal fold so that you're approaching it with a little bit more balance. An A vowel will get you closer to, still closer to the, to like a more complete sound, like a more finished product. Me, 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 me. Noting that when you're in the zona de passaggio, an A vowel modifies towards E eh a little bit. So it's not so much me, 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 and uh, and and then continue, continue on. Be very sensitive. You know, like stay in tune with your voice. Stay in tune with how it's functioning for you. If it's if it starts to feel tight or if it's getting fatigued really quickly, then um, you know, take a pause, evaluate airflow. Airflow is a very big part of this. If you're not evaluating how you are maintaining your subglottic air pressure or support is the common way of talking about that, um, then you would do well also to consider that and uh, use some, some airflow exercises in your, your regimen as well. Is inhalare la voce and appoggio the same thing or try to accomplish the same thing? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like on a, like a two-month rotation when inhalare la voce comes up. My, if I remember correctly, and it has been a little time since I went back. Like every, the thing is, is that since I don't 
really study that methodology, I don't retain the language of it quite as much as I do with the Paggio and with Bel Canto and stuff like that. My recollection of reading it last was that yes, the aims, the goals are the same. Um, I, f I remember feeling like Inhalare la Voce was a, a different way of framing a Paggio, but was not functionally different. But I would have to go and I would have to go and read up on it again uh, in order to f to really say like that's what's going on there. Um, but if my memory serves me correctly, that's what I recall from the last time I read about it. Read about it. Mm. Fiona, if you are practicing songs and after doing it for a while, notice a little phlegm, gravel. Does that mean you should rest? The tone quality obviously changes with this. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, depends. Whoa! Um, maybe, maybe not. If you've been sick or if you were singing like a lot the day before. FYI, folks, I realize now, I realize now I've gotten much further behind. I don't know why the chat doesn't auto update. It, it like does it for a while, then it just stops. Um, but anyways, I digress. Oh, new function, new functionality to YouTube. Um, now, when you watch these live streams after the fact, if you should choose to do so, the chat will scroll along with the video like it does here right now. How cool is that? Um, okay. <clears throat> Um, if you, okay, so like uh, using myself as an example, I sing, I sing a lot. And I sing and I talk a lot and, it, and it's a lot of wear and tear on the voice and I have to be very conscious of how I use my voice from a day-to-day -day basis. I know that shortly after I finish this live event, when I start to sing a bit more and I'm warming up my voice, I know that I'm going to be probably a little on the phlegmy side. Um, but I'm going to keep on singing through it because I know that there's no actual, there's nothing wrong. I'm not sick. Um, it's just that the phlegm mucus is a natural reaction. It's your, it's your body's reaction to when you've been using your voice. That stuff gets on the vocal fold to help the healing process. When you start your warm up and start singing, it's going to, it's going to rattle loose and rattle off. It should quickly go away. If it doesn't, then there's a problem. Now the gravel could be something entirely different. If the gravel is um, a little bit of, uh, of um, um, vocal fry, that suggests that you're not necessarily supporting the sound quite enough to maintain good adduction of the vocal fold. So there you wanna address your airflow, your subglottic air pressure to make sure that it's commensurate with the range that you're singing in. Now, the thing about the tone quality I find really, really interesting because while the tone, the, the, the tone quality need not necessarily change with the presence of additional phlegm. So that, to me, sounds closer to what I was just talking about with vocal fry, that you're not actually maintaining enough airflow to keep the vocal fold working pro properly, that it's abducting, and you're getting that uh, that kind of a of a gravelly sound, uh, and it may just be that in your in your song practice you're going towards that affectation. That's fine. If it starts to hurt, then you know, as as I used to say in the studio, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Maybe take a look at how much you're employing that that sound. Uh, and, you know, choose your sections that you're going to use that um, a little bit, maybe just, just choose to do that a little bit less in your singing if you can. If not, then other, other sorts of considerations come into play, like key changes and stuff like that to make sure that when you are doing that, you're in a very comfortable range, or if you're not in a comfortable range, it's only a limited amount of time. The best thing for clearing phlegm from the voice is continued vocalization. If that doesn't clear it up, then something else may be happening. 
and you may want to consider seeing an ENT or your doctor if you can, or just taking a little bit of, of a rest. I would, I would recommend keeping your vocalizations into a comfortable range while you're clearing through the phlegm, um, and then kind of see how it goes. Joanna, how can I stabilize my lower voice? As a female, it's way quieter than my high voice. Depends on how much quieter and if the tone quality is consistent. If your tone quality is consistent, you can still work towards emphasizing a little bit more airflow over vocal fold engagement. Typically, we accept a little bit more vocal fold engagement in the lower register of our voices. However, it's entirely plausible to work towards lessening that and increasing airflow in order to um, have a little bit more volume on the lower range of your voice. The, if you are pushing larynx down to sing those notes, which is not advisable, um, then that will cause problems and it will prevent you from using the vocal fold optimally. So you'll have to assess that and also work towards maybe increasing airflow a little bit so you get a little bit more balance and can get a little bit more resonance out of the lower voice. Bishy J Official, are some singing voices naturally more powerful than others? Does everyone have the capacity to belt and dominate over a large ensemble, massive choir or musicians, large venue, dominating a large venue with their voice? Uh, an interesting question. Okay, so does everyone have the capacity to belt? Yes. Yes. Belting is nothing more than maintaining thyroarytenoid dominance, um, you know, at or above the secundo passaggio. Most people can do that. Um, learning to make a smooth transition is what most people don't learn to do. And, and not learning to do that is what prohibits them from having the kind of large sounds that um, you're talking about here. That being said, every, every voice is slightly different. We're all different people and we have different configurations of how it all works. And some, some people are gonna have just a, a more um, optimized ratio of spaces and tissues than others. Um, but that is not to say that we can't all learn to have really effective, good transitions through the secundo passaggio and good overall resonance. The main, the, 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 I, I'm reminded again of this Scientific American article that was written, I think like now, like 10 years ago. So there's probably new information on this conceptual, on this concept, but it was an incredibly interesting article about the voice as a non-linear instrument. And what it, it goes through this in depth. In short, the vibrations that are created at the vocal fold um, we don't get louder by applying more force. We get louder by allowing the soft tissues in the aural cavity as much release as we can manage so that they vibrate sympathetically and they set up a nonlinear occurrence where they begin to resonate on themselves. And this is what creates those really amazing, beautiful, large operatic singing voices. It's the release and the nonlinear occurrence of these sympathetic vibrations working with one another. Um, it, so in that regard, belting is entirely inconsistent with that because belting is a high muscle tension pursuit or higher muscle tension pursuit than it is um, to allow those tissues to release and to make a smooth transition over the secundo passaggio. In the parking lot, excellent striker. Rob the truth. By rigidity, I mean I can't do much with my voice. I don't have much freedom. Yeah, <clears throat> then, abs then my, my response from earlier is absolutely appropriate. Tightness, rigidity, absolutely. Singing McSinger bands, beatboxing skills. Jeff, I, I don't know what skills means. Oh, skills! <sighs> Got it. Skills, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I mean, I've seen the Fat Boys in concert. You probably don't know who they were. Um, <clears throat> Rob the truth. To his tension in my jaw and throat, they engage while I don't. Soft, and I feel like it's because I don't have enough support. Then, yeah, you've, you've basically 
answer, in a sense, you've answered your own question. Now, jaw, jaw and tongue tension can be another matter entirely, even if you are doing re a really good job with your subglottic air pressure and support, you may still carry that jaw and, and tongue tension. Um, some of the ways to dispel that, um, the sticking your tongue out video, I think it says like releasing tongue tension or releasing jaw tension, that's a good way to do it. Also, if you like go, I mean, I'm not suggesting you're a beginner, but go on the beginner stuff because it's usually slower and a narrower range and just practice with a mirror, deliberately opening and closing your jaw as you're ascending and descending. So, and if it goes like this, that's not what we're looking for. That's just popping open and popping shut. We wanna be able to move it slowly open and slowly closed. That will help you start to do something different instead of tensing up those muscles. And then from there, you can really begin to release that jaw tension. You're welcome, the sauce group. Without violating copyrights, can you give an example of how to practice the first two words to La Bamba? Para, bala are the words, you have to say them fast. That's funny. I always thought it was just la 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 at the beginning of that tune. Um, Stryker, I, I, I don't. I'm probably overthinking this, but you've got me worried now about violating copyrights. Um, so I'm, I'm, I am, I'm afraid I'm going to take a pass on that one. Um, and plus, my Spanish. I, I would personally, before I started demonstrating that for you, I would want to practice it because my Spanish is miserable. Um, uh, I do apologize for that, but yeah, I would rather I would rather not do it than do it incorrectly. Um, so, and, and I would want I guess I, I would at least want to check copyright thing. But you, there's always usually there's a lot, I'm not terribly concerned about that. There's usually all kinds of like you get a free pass whenever it's for educational purposes and things like that. But um, but yeah, I, I hope you'll understand. Um, and and for, furthermore, of course, Stryker, I know that you do take lessons on a weekly basis. You, you, you know, that would be something that you might consider asking your teacher, too. Tadeus, hello. My jaw is really giving me a problem. Help. I just talked about that. Um, I, I know I'm really far behind in the chat, so I assume that you just saw that response. But that's what I would do. Go to, go to some slow stuff and take it slow. At Stryker, at Karina. Hi, Mandy. Mandy, I have sludge collected in my throat and vocal cords from my horrendous allergies. Oh my goodness. Uh, get rid of a lot to sing for a while. Yikes. Yes, it would not be fun. Hello, Jürgen. Glad to see you again. Again, I'm on the road, this time in bus to Berlin. How cool. I believe last week you were in Prague. That is so neat. I feel like I'm traveling Europe um, by association with you. Um, how cool. Singy Mix Singer Pants. Uh, thanks for listening to Groban's Les Miserables Bring Him Home. Can you explain how he gets the two different sounds for the high range? Thank you. That's right. So, never, I've never been in a lesson with Josh. I almost said Mick Groban, but Josh, Josh Groban. So, you know, I don't entirely know, but it sounds to me like um, on the first one, the, the, there's a moment there in the beginning when he favored um, the cricothyroid dominant singing voice, and then the second time he was going for more of a voce piena in testa, though I don't think he was actually above the secondo passaggio. I don't know his voice that intimately, so I, can't, I cannot say that for sure. An example of this would be... <clears throat> I need more water today. I said I said earlier I'm not sick. I might be. I might be like a little bit. Something is going on. I'm not sure if I'm. I don't. I'm not sure if I'm just using my voice too much. But uh... so like the first time, and it was it was only like once or twice. It was early on in the tune. 
he came through like a D or an E natural above middle C, and it was like. <laughs> difference there is that in the lighter, I don't know what you want to call it, um, in, the, in the sort of plusher feeling, I don't know, I mean, it, we get subjective so quickly. In the one, um, I'm, I'm really favoring my, my cricothyroid dominant singing voice. And then in, in the in the one that's more consistent, I am following good registration event technique, and I'm making sure that I'm matching resonance as I carry on. It's it's just a balancing act between how much activity of the cricothyroid musculature I'm allowing. Um, in the lighter one, I'm, I'm allowing it to dominate. I hope that answers your question. Jürgen. Wonderful, Jürgen. Wonderful, yeah, always welcome. Thanks for saying hi. Hello, Karina. I can hum and stay in the lower register. Oh, doctor's always saying it. study all together, but no performing for a week. Four gigs I have to miss. Ah, oh, what a drag. It's nice that he's letting you hum. That will keep things kind of loose for you. At Altug, at Mandy. Um, John, if I can hit a C6, does that make me a countertenor? No. Um, it means that you can... And hit is different from sustained phonation or sustained singing. Um, you know, that doesn't make you a countertenor. Um, what, what a countertenor even is, is debatable. What... Um, what it does mean is that you can hit a C6. Whether you can sustain it and use it in a song is another question. Um, where your secundo passaggio is and the overall qualities of your voice throughout your tessitura is what is generally used to determine your FOC or your um, vocal range designation. You know, alto, tenor, baritone, that's so, 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 so forth. At Mandy Cummins, Dawn. Hello from, Ra yes, Rainy indeed. Can you talk a little about yourself, how you got started singing, and a bit about your training, conservatory, etc. What keeps you motivated? That might be part. Um, sure, uh, yeah, sure, um, happy to. Let's see. I have always been fascinated with music. Um, I don't know if I would have been fascinated with music uh, I don't know if it's, it's just that I, st I was so fascinated from so early on and I was given access to it. Um, so it, it's just been a kind of reciprocal thing my entire life. My, some of my earliest memories are listening to these five Beatles LPs and I had this like, like a little suitcase phonograph, like a little kitty thing, and, but the LPs fit on it. And I mean, looking back on it now, I'm sure the sound was horrible, it wasn't stereo but I would listen to them over and over and over and over again, um, taking a break every once in a while to listen to a Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory LP that I also had. Um, usually during that time, I would eat a whatchamacallit bar. Um, I pretended, you know, it was like the Willy Wonka thing because back in the day, they didn't have Willy Wonka candies. <clears throat> um, I studied, I, I, I began taking lessons um, at the age of 13. Um, that was actually as a saxophone player. Um, I did sing through high school, and I also studied. And then I went to the University of Michigan, where I did bachelor's and master's degrees in music performance. I studied saxophone primarily. I also studied voice. I did take a voice jury and passed, which was cool. Um, however, at that point, I elected not to go into a PhD or DMA program, and instead moved to California. I continued my studies in California with a variety of vocal teachers um, in a variety of different disciplines. Um, after some time, I did not get, I was not getting the kind of results from my voice that I felt like I ought to have been getting for 
the amount of time I practiced for the lessons that I was taking and all that kind of stuff. So I began to investigate it. It was at that point, now this is, this is still like 15 years ago. It was at that point that I got Richard Miller's um, books. I, uh, I bit the bullet and bought Training Tenor Voices. And at that point, I think it was 80 bucks. So by all accounts, I got an incredible deal. Um, and, and in reading it, I, I tell this story frequently, in reading it, I, I, I read, there's, this, there's one paragraph in there, I should, I should mark it so I could um, read it when I tell this tale, but I read it over and over and over and over because I, I, I couldn't reconcile the difference of what he was suggesting versus the reality of my training for decades. And this is the difference between um, sticking one's belly out to inhale versus the apogeal breath management system, which relies on lateral expansion of the rib cage and uh, engagement of the inner and outer oblique muscles, rectus abdominis, and intercostal muscles to maintain good phonation. Um, and, it, and, and it was almost as if, and about a year after starting that transition was when everything changed for me vocally. And, you know, what you hear of me now, it's almost as if I, I started my training at that point. Um, what keeps me motivated? Um, probably uh, my, my, immediate, my immediate thought, my first thought was a love of the game. Um, I, every, every person with whom I get to work is like a little a little treat. It's like a little puzzle, you know, and they have, they have their way of thinking about their voice and they have their ways of looking at the world. And when we get to work together to integrate and, and find out how they will come to an understanding of how they're going to get from their voice the most and, and, and achieve their goals and move towards making those things happen. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it feels really, it feels really, really special and good to me um, to do what I do. The YouTube channel um, is a way for me to, I, I started the YouTube channel because I, I, when I realized how incorrect so many of the things that I had been taught, how many shortcuts there were um, in my training, I, I just felt like it made my life as a singer so much more difficult. And it made me ask, had I, had I been taught these things, you know, and I'm, I'm, and I'm going back to my university training as well. Like when I was studying at university, like had I been delivered this information that way, how might it have changed my, my overall progress as a vocalist? Impossible to say. Um, but you know, that's why I'm always talking about muscles, thyroid, dominant, crecothyroid, dominant, zona de passaggio, secunda passaggio. Like, I want to be very clear about how the voice operates and hopefully convey it in a way that if it's not easy to understand, it can be understood and implemented so that these misconceptions can, at least in some small way, like, you know, at least there'll be a small subset of singers that have a better understanding and maybe that will compound on itself so that no one would ever necessarily have to, um, be, you know, get information that wasn't accurate again and they could get more, satisfa more satisf satisfaction, satisfaction out of their voices more quickly. And who knows, who knows, I don't know. So that's it, sorry kind of went on, on like that for a while. This is probably a good time for me to mention that if I don't get to your question today, please, please copy your question into the comments of this video and I will answer it in due course. Um, also, it's a good time to mention that all the information about how to support this channel is in the description. Um, there's lots of ways you can do um, to support my channel that are totally free. Um, and it's just, it's just a matter of clicking on links for Amazon and stuff like that for the affiliate program. It's all in there. It is really, really appreciated and it truly helps, tr helps, truly helps. I hope that answers your question, Dawn. Andrew, yo, um, how do I achieve the mix? Can we get some tips? Yeah. 
st- actually, I went over this a little bit earlier when I was ta- when someone was asking about reducing the squeakiness in their voice. You might want to reference that in brief. You, 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 you. You, 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 you. There, I'm starting with a, an oo vowel. It's very easy to keep that vowel open and then descend. It's important that you do descending exercise exercises out of the zona de passaggio initially. That will make it easier to circumvent old habits that may have you squeezing in that range. Um, there's quite a few videos on my channel that go through this. There's a, a like a how to sing high notes or a high notes playlist. Maybe have a look at that. <coughs> Pardon me. Don Cecilia, oh no, B plus equals that. Do you remember that laughing on? I see. <laughs> Very Buddhist of me. <laughs> Thanks, Mandy. I try. My coach has been on me as of late about the E sound. With Hugh, it is like eh, like echo, yes. But with other teachers, it is like it is E, like air, alien, A, alienate, Y. Alienate, eh. Um, I suspect it's your tongue root, Stryker. Um, you know, if you, have your, if you have the tip of your tongue lightly touching your front bottom teeth, um, assess, where, assess where the rear of the tongue is. Um, if there's too much engagement, the rear of the... If there's too much engagement at the tongue root, that could prohibit motion as well. And so you may not necessarily be able to change it that easily. But I would assess um, that if your A vowel, if your, if your A vowel is in alignment, if, if she likes that, then try going from A into E. A. When I have a, a, a client whose E vowel is... Um, overly narrow, that's that's what I reach for. At Mandy, uh, I think that's a smiley face. Mandy, at Altug, it's really just a combination of nasty allergies and abject exhaustion. <laughs> Get some rest, Mandy. Have a nice cup of tea. Or E, like in A, A, A. It sounds like you're just overall E vowel alignment is a little bit tricky right now, Stryker. Get it sandwiched between two like really good vowels, you know? Oh dear, I'm horribly behind. Uh, honest, yeah, so folks, I'm never gonna, I'm really sorry. I had no idea I was so far behind. Um, I'm not gonna get to everyone's questions today. I do apologize. Please copy them into the comments of this video. Um, because YouTube will release it as soon as I click off, as soon as I end the live event. Um, copy them in there and I will address them. Um, what are the best exercises? This is Anastasia. Exercise for vocal beginners, and can I expect to get be better at singing because I think I am hopeless? Okay, um, I've heard that a lot. I've heard about a lot of hopeless causes in my day. We can all, almost all of us can benefit from vocal um, studies. There's a beginner playlist. Get in there. Nothing's, not, there's nothing in the world, nothing in the world stopping you. There's, and, and actually, I am now making a concerted effort to put new videos into that playlist on a monthly basis, and I'm going to keep on doing that all year. So you're going to get more and more exercises in there. Get in there and, and get to it. Um, you know, you, you'll want to... Keep an, keep an eye on your voice, keep an ear on your voice, just listen carefully, but I wouldn't overthink it as well. Um, focus on doing the exercises, focus on doing them every day. Record yourself once a month doing the exercises and see if you can tell the difference. Sequencer, thank you, Stryker. Um, sequencer, a global voice. If you'd like to keep the conversation going, um, go over to Facebook and do your search for Sequencer, a global voice. And you, it's a closed group, because I want to make sure that it stays all cool. Um, but just ask to get in, and I'll OK you, and you'll be off to the races. Lots of sharing, lots of talking, um, lots and lots and lots and lots of good stuff. I pop in once in a while. Um, 
I'm really, I have a big, I have a big project that I'm doing right now. I can't tell you what it is. Um, but, uh, but you'll, you'll learn about it soon enough. Um, but that's why I've been, I've probably been a little bit less present than I might normally be both in answering questions on the comments and as well uh, over in Sequencer. Is it bad being a baritone? No. <laughs> um, no, it's not bad being a baritone. Love your voice. This is, this, this is your voice. This is the voice that you get. Love it. Like, learn, learn what you can do with it. Focus on what you can do, not what it is. Um, because there's only one you in the whole wide world, seven and some odd billion people, and there's just one you. And there may be those that are similar, but there's just one you and just one your voice. And I, for one, um, want to hear what you can do, uh, you yourself. So just be, be you. Thanks for asking. I'm okay. At Singing Mr. Man, at Andrew, I was being told by one coach that I have, that inhalar the voce is to drink in the sound. Yeah, I know, but that doesn't really tell us anything. I mean, I, I want to know, like, what, what muscles are we supposed to be engaging? What is the intent of it? To drink in the sound is purely conceptual and as such is entirely subjective. What, what to drink in the sound to one person may mean may mean something entirely different. Mandy comments at Singing McSinger has Michael Solano. Glad to be back for your live stream. I've been using your videos for a while. I'll just say again, you're great. Thank you. I really appreciate that. At Kane, at what age does the male voice fully mature? Is it always slightly in flux? Dylan Klein Music, awesome question. Um, you know, honestly, around our 40s is somewhere where you would expect to really come into your full sort of maturity. Um, so I think that's debatable to a certain extent. It's not to say that, you know, in your 20s and 30s, you can't have a rather compelling and full mature sound. Um, but um, for some, uh, for some, and it does vary somewhat by Falk, at least according to Richard Miller, um, a higher range tessitoras tend to mature sooner than the lower range. So particularly for like the basso profundo, they may not mature for some time. At Carina. I'm a high baritone, groovy. Michael Solano, I'm wondering what you recommend for the length of time to warm up. Does it vary with all singers and is there such a thing as too much warm up? It will vary from individual to individual. Um, if you're warming up so much that you're tired when it comes to doing your repertoire, that's too much. Um, what is not in your question, but I feel is rather pertinent is that what you do from day to day will largely impact the length and efficacy of your warm-ups. If you maintain a very good daily practice, your warm-ups will get shorter and shorter, almost certainly, unless, unless you're not using your voice in a well-balanced way. If you're using it in an imbalanced fashion, then your warm-ups may never really change. Um, you may always need to warm up for a rather protracted a period of time. Um, if you, like someone, you know, like I, I sing literally every day, I teach almost days, um, I, I, I don't really, I don't really warm up anymore. Um, basically, I roll out of bed, have a couple cups of coffee, drink a cup of water, and I'm basically ready to go. Um, some warming of, of my body kind of helps me get going, but in terms of actually singing, there's little to no warm-up that's required. Like I can vocalize right over the secondo passaggio and vocalize and feel pretty comfortable throughout my range. It's my body, however, that needs to wake up in the mornings. Um, you know, if I overdo it, then I may be a little bit more phlegmy, but I can still do all my vocalizations. So it's, it's, a, it's a variety of things that will impact your warm-up length of time and how they go, um, all of which will have an impact. At Andrew, at Dylan, at Stryker, Fiona Steele, you're welcome. Thank you for watching. At Andrew, at Kane, I feel like a, I'm like, I'm like calling a race. At Stryker, at Kane, at Andrew, Dylan Thomas takes the front lead. At Stryker, um, at Andrew, at Kane, at Andrew, I find people think belting is synonymous with singing powerfully. You are correct, Mandy. 
Um, you are absolutely correct, and it's ironic that often belting prohibits us from singing powerfully. At Mandy, at me, I've been finding my keys for most tuners are in B-flat and E-flat. Oddly, these are the keys of my instruments, clarinet and guitar. Have you heard such a thing? B-flat and E-flat clarinet and E-flat on guitar. Hmm. No. Um, no, but the thing is, Stryker, is that um, if you're using a B-flat clarinet, B-flat on your tuner would be a major second off, right? Like, I mean, it's, it's B-flat clarinet, meaning that the, um, you know, a, a, I always get this backwards. So to play a C, if, to play a C in concert pitch, I'll think about it on soprano saxophone. Um, to play a C in concert pitch, if you, if, you, if you play a B flat on the piano, then you finger C on the clarinet. That's what, that's what it is. They're a major second off. Um, so there, there's, there's, a disc, dis, there's something disjointed about that. Um, I, don't know that the, I don't know that there is necessarily any correlation there. It's just kind of interesting. And furthermore, finding keys for tunes, I mean, is primarily a function of the melody more than it is... Um, I, I would think anything else. At Altug. Um, anyway, I'll post something in sequence. Or something. I used to have the squeeze to belt those notes in the song, but I've got so much better at relaxing, just allowing my voice to go there, and it's so much better. Wonderful. At Mandy, at Altug, at Altug. Mandy, Jeff, have you had your flu shot? Please do. The flu is killing people, and that is terrifying. I don't get my flu shots. Sorry. Um... I mostly try, I, I, I really don't go out very much. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds somewhat like I'm, I'm not misanthropic, um, but I mostly spend my time making videos, teaching. I like to go running. Um, once in a while I go to the grocery store, but I don't, I don't interact all that much. Um, um, but, you know, ironically enough, I, I used to get the flu shot all the time, and every time I got the flu shot, I ended up getting the flu that year. I haven't had the flu since, and I haven't taken a flu shot in seven or eight years. That is, that is not meant as, as, as an, uh, I'm not advocating not getting the flu shot. You know, especially if you're young or if you have health conditions, get your flu shots, be safe, get your flu shot in general. Um... But um, but for me, I, I don't know. Michael, haha, para Yeah, exactly. Flip all the R's and enunciate all the L's. Eh, there you go. Jürgen, yep, I was in Czech. Well, well, being on the road is nice, but our tour is miserable. Half empty halls. I'm so sorry. The money raised is almost entirely spent for transportation, but still better than sitting at home. Yeah, man. You know, and and speaking of, speaking of touring and gigging, like. The, when you, you know, you, there's a certain level of sharpness that you get when you're out on tour. Um, I've done, I think I've done two national tours and I've done like, I don't know, three or four Pacific Northwest tours. And, you know, when you come back from that, like you, you're, you're, you just get elevated from, from gigging night after night after night. I think on the, the first national tour, I did something like 25 consecutive gigs you know like 25 gigs in a row and it was awesome like it it's just awesome um so you know i mean and I, i'll be honest with you i didn't even come close to breaking even on those gigs like not even close i spent way more money doing the tours than i did recouping stuff so you know you're way ahead as far as as far as that's concerned um my voice isn't too far gone at all. He's used to me now. Good. At Michael, funny thing is, along with singing, I am obliged to play bass. That's cool, man. Czech language is so nice and funny. I used to study Russian in school, and it does sound like children speaking Russian. Um, that's awesome. I love playing bass and singing in a band. Like that's one of my favorite favorite things to do. 
Um, I probably, I'd probably like the most fun would be playing bass and singing harmonies or something like that. Um, I mean, I love, I love being the lead singer too, but I think that you get nearly all of the glory, like all of the fun and like the, the joy of singing, singing the harmony parts. And I always feel like I'm adding like, when you do a harmony part, I don't feel like you add a single layer of um, like musicality to it. I feel like you add like three layers of musicality to the music. Um, Though I don't know, you might very well be the lead singer. Anyways, um, great stuff. Yes, Karina, my life is, I think, is very interesting. Capone, why my voice sounds better when I'm singing louder? I mean, record voice, especially how to tr train that all low, middle, and high volume singing voice all sounds good. Short answer. My initial response is that your microphone may not be set up optimally to record you singing at lower volume. Assuming that, you know, you've been studying for a long time and you, have a, and you do a lot of singing, assuming that you are maintaining consistent tone quality as you lower your overall dynamic level, I would question the microphone and how you're using it. Additionally, I believe you're a baritone. Um, additionally, it may not be a good microphone selection for you. Um, you know, Yes, expensive condenser microphones will work on a variety of sound sources. They do not necessarily work on all sound sources. Uh, and you might be using one that just isn't very good overall for your voice. Um, that's my short answer. Karina Chen, how many hours would you practice singing in a day when you were studying at university? It varied. Um, it varied quite widely. When I was getting ready for juries, it spiked upwards quite a lot. In general, you know, it was not that much, like an hour or something to that effect. Um, I didn't have a lot of, uh, I, did, I did not have a lot of constraints around that. Um, and I was also studying a lot of other stuff too. Don, awesome, I'm realizing how chock full of stuff your channel is going through with a fine tooth comb. Enjoy, enjoy. Folks, I gotta go, I gotta go. Thank you so much. I know that I've missed a ton of different stuff. Um, please, if you have questions, um, drop it into the, 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 the comments. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't uh, look through all this stuff. If you've got, um, you know, questions, yeah, I use Skype and Zoom, Karina. Um, hey, Mrs. Webster, um, I got, but I gotta go. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all your questions. Thank you for everything. It's just really great to get together on these Saturdays and chit chat. Take really good care of your voices. Enjoy singing. I'll see you either on Twitter or in the comments or something like that. Um, yeah, take really good care of your voices. Enjoy singing. I'll see you next week. Bye.